Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy Tom, and today we're going to be doing another GUI video on Easy Auto GUI for AHK version 2. So, <clears throat> that, po that video was very popular. I got over 30 likes, which I said means I'll do a follow up video. Same thing with this video. Every time I get 30 likes on a video, I try to find some way to expand on that in a second, possibly a third video. We'll see. Just depends what I can come up with. So a question I get asked a lot in these videos that have to do with automating uh, GUI building, basically, is how to actually, when you click like on a button or whatever in your GUI, make it perform an action, you know, how to connect it to the function that you're trying to accomplish. So that's what we're going to do today. <clears throat> I've done videos uh, using Smart GUI Creator, uh, which is version 1. Uh, that one, unfortunately, you do need to copy and paste the code into your IDE, or if you're using like Notepad for some reason, um, and do it manually that way. You're still going to have to do it manually, but the nice thing is you can do it actually in the GUI uh, creation tool here. So we're going to go ahead and launch that. If I can get the folder to open. So I did uh, an intro video very basic on this, so this is uh, make sure to check that out if you're confused on anything I talk about. And at the end of this video, we're also going to show just some random features that I think that you might find useful just to expand your knowledge of the capability of this program. So real quick, let me just resize this to fit into my viewing area. That looks pretty good. And so, like in the first video, we showed you how to do a lot of this stuff, so I'm just going to kind of run through it real quick with some basic stuff. So we got a button here, and as you see, it's live creating the code. Uh, we're going to add another one. Oops, wrong thing. We'll add another one. Let's make this one a little bigger. Um, you can go up here and say change text, and we'll type it as uh, press me. So... Here's the thing we need to look at. We're going to go ahead and minimize uh, this, get rid of that, because we're just looking at the code for now. So here's our GUI being created. And as you see, the beginning of each button is going to be basically the same OGC button and then OK. So whatever text is in there. And here's the other one, the bigger one that says press me. So then below it, we have our um, event handlers. Basically, as you see, on event for OK, when I click, so what's triggering it? And if you hover over this a little bit, uh, you can see a bunch of the other different options too. Um, but we're going to keep it simple, which is to click. And where is it going to go in your code? So it's going to on event handler. But look at this. When I created a second one for the press me, it's doing the same thing on event handler. So basically, no matter what I push, it's going to go down here to this function right here. As you see, the handler name is on event handler. And yeah, we don't want that. We don't want both buttons to basically be doing the exact same thing. So as you see, I push OK. I get this tool tip right here. If I push this, I get the exact same tool tip. I don't want that. Um, so as you see, it's basically just a uh, tool tip. And then all the text, it's uh, what it's displaying and stuff. So we are going to create oops i didn't realize there we go so we're going to go ahead and we want to create a second one so the easiest way to do that is literally just copy and paste the code that's already there um so we'll leave that one the same but down here let's uh you know we'll say hello world so we'll just kind of get that because yeah we don't really care you know, you can delete however much of this you want. You know, just get rid of, you know, that. But whatever. We'll just leave Hello World so we can distinguish the two. Well, now, the problem is we have two event handlers with the exact same name. You can change this whole thing to whatever you want. You don't have to have the on event handler in there. You could change this. So I could change this to, like, on event handler 1. Or if I actually push the right thing, 1. And I can name this too. Or I can name this Go Here. Obviously, you should probably come up with a little bit better names than I'm using. Um, but this is just a quick demo. 
So what we want to do then, though, is we want to make sure these match with down here. So this one, we need to change to one. So on event handler one. And this one I renamed to go here. So we just need to highlight that and say go here. So that's what we got now. We're going to go ahead and execute it. We're going to push OK. We got that one that we already seen. It disappear after it's timed down. And then we're going to push press me. And as you see, uh, we got the one that starts with hello world right there. And that's pretty much as what you do. So every single button or, you know, if you click on one of these items here, that's how you connect it to your function. You know, the action you want it to perform. So that's not always going to the exact same one. Now, just a little quick, I wanted to throw out some other things out there uh, that I think you might find useful. If we come up here, you know, we got all these drop downs. So under control, um, you can also do change text. Actually, let me bring back uh, this. So I got, I guess, press me, highlight it. So I can go to control. I can say change text, do it that way too, or right click like we did before. Either way is fine. Um, but the other thing I like too is you can go to like font, for example. And you can do a lot of changes here. You know, I can say like 14. I can change it to... I don't know what half of these are, you know, whatever, navy, green, blue, um, stuff like that. And as you see, it did enlarge. Um, sometimes different things won't work on there, depending on what kind of control you're using. Uh, the other one, too, you can click on is options. And options, there's uh, different things you can do here. So this, you have a drop down with the different buttons. So you, in case you forgot to highlight the correct one, you can come here. You can do, you know, no theme, you know, default, all that kind of stuff. General, you got the text. If you need variables, uh, what position it is in. So you can, you know, sit there and as you see, it's moving. So if you want exact coordinates, so everything lines up 100%, you can. And there's a whole bunch of different other options, um, events. But um, you can also go to window. This will affect the entire uh, GUI. And so you can say, like, no system menu you know, always on top. So you can give it like different types of um, functions. So as you see, I just said no system menu. There's no longer the X, the minimize, the enlarge uh, buttons right here. So you can do stuff like that, push apply, and they're back. Um, so there's a lot you can do there. This one I think is the one that a lot of people definitely would find useful. Um, with that, properties is the same window, but it just takes you to a different tab to start off. So doesn't really matter which one you're using there. Under view, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can do here. Um, so you got syntax highlighting. If for some reason you don't want that, and in case you don't know what that is, that's when like different words, um, and commands, and syntax uh, are highlighted with different colors representing kind of what their purpose is. Um, another one I kind of like is I always have highlight identical text on. That means if I click on um, a word and highlight it, it shows me every occurrence of it. That can be useful if you're looking for a specific thing. Um, another one that I like too is active or highlight active line. So basically whatever line I'm on, it's going to show me where I'm at. That's useful in case you don't know where your cursor is. It's just a faster way to find where you currently are um, at. Another one too is even though this doesn't have the numbers right now, uh, let's say I want to revisit, uh, you know, this uh, text line here, this, uh, you know, maybe I want to change the event handler name to something different later on. I can set a reminder to myself by just putting this like a little, you know, hand doing this and I can be like, okay, that is connected to that. So I know I need to revisit this and this function later, but I'm busy doing something else. It's just nice to point out different things that you might want to remember a specific line just to find them a little bit faster. Um, obviously, we got um, a bunch of other stuff. Um, you can play with that. You got Zoom, but uh, with Zoom, you can honestly just kind of come out here and use uh, hold down the control uh, key and use your scroll wheel. Um, that's probably an easier way to do it than having to constantly come up here and say Zoom, 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 Zoom. Um, debug, you know, there's a lot of different options. Um, the best one in there um, to really show you that could be useful is variables. You can click that. Obviously, I have none, but this will display all the variable names, what their value, and, you know, what type of variable they are. This is a great reference uh, guide here that wasn't available in the version 1 
a, a smart GUI creator, so I really like that. All right, uh, hopefully that gave you a little bit more insight to this on how to connect functions to your GUI actions and just some other random uh, things on there that could be useful for you. If you guys have ideas on something else you want to see a little bit more in depth on this program, uh, just let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe. I'm always throwing one, two videos out having to do with automation to you guys every week. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.